friend of mine's family was in the hospital and they were waiting for the surgeon to come out and tell them about their father. And the surgeon came out and he said, I have good news and I have bad news. Let me tell you what's happening. Your father is in very bad straits and all the family was there listening and they said, we can help him, but he needs a new brain. Insurance will cover the procedure, but you have to pay for the brain. And after they sort of picked themselves up, the sons, the daughters, the in-laws, someone finally said, well, how much does it cost? And the surgeon said, well, it depends on whether it's a male brain or a female brain. And no one sort of in this dire situation wanted to ask, well, what's the difference? And you could see the men sort of, you know, twittering and smirking and the women were just sort of baffled. And finally the son said, why the difference? Tell us, how is it priced? And he said, well, the male brain costs $5,000 and the female brain costs $250. And so finally, you know, no one wanted to look at each other and the son said, well, why the difference? Tell us again, why the difference? And the surgeon said, it's standard operating procedure. We have to mark down the brain that was used. <laughs> and so, I say all this because I definitely had a brain that I thought was used, and yet I'm going to tell you about a little experience that I'm going through right now. I lived in a man's world my whole life. I have a father, two brothers, four sons, and a baseball team. And <laughs> about two years ago, we were updating our estates, you know, in typical American style. And I had met my husband when I was 17. So we built everything together. And in the process, to make a long story short, the estate lawyer said, well, your husband doesn't really have to ask you for permission to do that. He can do that by himself. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, well, you signed a document when you decided to move to Los Angeles that gave everything to your husband. And I said, impossible. You know, why would I do something like that? 40 years of knowing him, 30 years of being married, couldn't have happened. We were signing a little house agreement to make sure the homes were protected in LA like they were protected in Massachusetts. No, not true. I said, impossible, impossible. I say something to my husband, he says, impossible, we'll fix it. Roll the clock forward and I learn that on the day that we were packing up to go to LA, my husband and my husband's attorney, and who I thought was my attorney, had me sign a document. The day we were packing, the day we were talking to headmistresses about where my younger two were going to school, put something in front of me that morning and said, this will protect the houses. And I signed it. And it turns out I signed six copies, three of which included in my estate the Dodgers and three of which didn't. My husband only signed three. Now all of this I can talk about now because it was testified to on the stand. And of the three that were signed that gave me the Dodgers, we found out, which was also testified on the stand, that after they were signed and notarized, they had been tampered with. And the exhibits that gave me the Dodgers, along with my husband, were pulled. And that was shocking. It was vindicating. Um, like your previous speaker talked about, I had gone to MIT. I had practiced law. I thought I had protected myself, understanding the laws in Massachusetts. And most of all, I had trust. I had trust in my husband. I had trust in the attorney. And I really believed that people would care the way I cared about them. So why do I tell you this story? Because you might think that I was upset, or as Nietzsche says, I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that I can't believe you anymore. And it was a real revelation. I'm an American. I feel like it's very important to fight for what I believe in and what I've created with my husband and my partner, that American women are role models for women all over the world, that 
They have to do it for other women in America. We have to find our voices. We have to fight for what's right and what we've done. And we have to help all the other women who don't have the wherewithal to accomplish what perhaps we can accomplish in America, whether it's through the legal system, whether it's through the media, whether it's through Twitter or Facebook or word of mouth. But the message is we matter. We make a difference. We have to keep trusting. Trust is everything. If you can't trust, what's the point? So I'll make the same mistake again. I'll trust everyone until I've been given a reason not to trust. But you have to learn how to manage it and be aware. And so I hope that my message is live the journey. It's all part of the journey. And let's try to help one another. But you must also help yourself and fight and use your voice. Thank you. Thank you.